Rev up your engines! Here we've got a nice snowy day to check out a hot Corolla. Yeah, I'm not making this up. A hot Corolla. This is a Toyota Corolla XRS. People always complain. Corollas are boring. This is not a boring Corolla. And here's the odd part. Toyota doesn't release the actual sales but it's probably about 65, 6,600 of these were made and sold. Compare that to the 45 million total Corolla sales, and perhaps that says that people want boring Corollas. Now, of course, what makes this one not boring is the engine and transmission. This is the 2ZZGE65 engine. It's the same engine that was used in the Lotus Elise. It has 170 horsepower. This light car, it gets up and goes, especially because of its transmission. It's got the same six speed transmission that the Lotus used. Now, when you look at the interior, it just looks like a normal Toyota Corolla. Got a lot of space in the back. The Corolla comfy seats, like any Toyota. It's got heat that works, air conditioning that works. Everything still works on it. Now, this vehicle was made as Toyota's response to the Civic SI. Kind of competitive. The, the Civic took off for some reason. This was not a popular car. But it's an awful lot of fun to drive. You can still pick them up in the United States relatively cheaply. You can often find a decent one for six grand or a lot less. And with this engine and this transmission, it makes a great sleeper car. They think, oh, it's just a little Corolla. It can't do much. Well, it really can. As you can hear, it sounds a little different. Somebody might think, oh, it just sounds like a Corolla with a hole in the exhaust. But that's not the case. Like a Corolla? Well, listen to this. I don't think so. an upgraded suspension system it's a little bit lower than a standard Corolla and it's got a little beefed up suspension to it it's pretty amazing but a little Corolla that just looks normal can do now you don't have to have one this loud but he's put flow masters on it so it's louder than normal you can make them a lot quieter if you want but of course most people want to have them flow free and have a little more zip okay now he bought it used for about seven grand three years ago. He's put 50,000 miles on it. And the only thing that he had to do was change the valve cover gasket because it was leaking. Now he modified the exhaust himself. He didn't have to. That shows you the quality. It went all those miles. He didn't put any money in it other than peanut money for a valve cover gasket that he did himself. Yet it still runs fine. Now this noise is what you're gonna hear in all these engines. The cams on these, as they age, they make a little bit of noise, but it's nothing out of, out of the ordinary. This is the ordinary noise that these things make. As you can see, it's just an idle. Once you go off idle and rev it up, it doesn't start going. That's just the noise that they make when they get some age on it. And as you can see, this thing now has 141,000 miles on it. Look at the gear shifter. Doesn't wiggle at all. Still idles like a dream. And it is a Toyota Corolla, so look. Door cards are still clean. The dash is not cracked like it would be in a GM product. All the windows still work. Go up and down. And it's still got the stock Toyota radio with a CD player in it. Now, I left it static that way because if I ever turn on a radio and music plays, the people who made the music get mad and want money for it. So I can't play any music that I didn't create myself. The radio does work. <laughs> I just turned it to an empty station. Now, it would make a good sleeper car, but he's kind of giving it away here. <laughs> Telling everybody what's inside it. Of course, a lot of people wouldn't know what the heck that means. So that's not too big of a giveaway. Away. and it does have beautiful aftermarket rims on it now he put these beautiful wheels on himself but being a Corolla even these fancy ones with only 600 bucks for all four you can have a lot of fun for a little bit of money in one of these things and still have an infinitely reliable machine that's something you know they don't get and plus let's face the facts we live in a capitalist society since they made somewhere between six and seven thousand of these guess what my bet is these things are going to go up in value look at the honda s2000 different car 
but now they're going for a ton of money. 15 years ago, you could get them pretty cheap. These, you can still get pretty cheap now, but as there's lots of them out there, and since they're Toyotas, they generally will still be in good shape. Get your hand on a good used one, you can have a lot of fun cheap. It might be worth quite a bit of money in the next 15, 20 years, you never know. Since they didn't make that many of them, that's a big deal in the car world. And especially something like this. 45 million Corollas, right? So they're not gonna be worth much themselves. But when they're an XRS, less than 7,000 made, that's another story. Just don't get fooled by somebody sticking one of these chrome things on like one of my customers did once on a regular Corolla. <laughs> if it doesn't have the engine and transmission and suspension, it's not going to be worth anything being a normal Corolla as it ages. It'll just be a good car to drive around in. And if you were totally insane, you could always throw some nitrous in the trunk and put a real big boost on it and it would really go like stink. Just realize if you're going to do something like that, be prepared to spend a lot of money because things will wear out faster. If you remember, the other day when I did a video on the guy's Turbo Supra that had 1,250 horsepower, well, he figured he's got about $200,000 into that car. Now, this guy's got like $8,000 in this car, so me, I'd be happy with one of these, having fun with that rather than $200,000. Just realize that this XRS was one of less than 7,000 made. At some point in time, Toyota made Access and various Corollas that really had 15, 16 more horsepower than the regular one. That was more show than anything else. This was a serious one, and for whatever reason, they only made them for a few years and only made a few of them. While Honda's continually making their Civic SIs and selling the heck out of them, I mean, of course, the Civic Type R, you know, you're going forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars if you get a really loaded one and soup it up for racing. This thing can have a lot of fun for a little bit of money and still be a totally reliable everyday driver. So the next time somebody tells you, man, Toyota Corolla, what boring cars they are, tell them about this Corolla. The Corolla that's a little bit different. It has a Lotus engine and transmission in it that is not in the least boring. Unless, of course, you want to drive it slow. That's your choice. You can drive it anywhere you want. The car doesn't care. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Fellhook1003 says, Hello, Scotty. I got no 6 Toyota Sienna LE. Had an engine replacement done due to a blown head gasket. It runs great and doesn't overheat, but now the engine bay is extremely hot. Any ideas what could be wrong with it? First thing you want to do is see if they put any of the heat shields that belong on the exhaust and didn't install them. Left it off. Then it will get hotter inside because they're meant to deflect the heat under the car and blow away. Could be they just left some of those heat shields off. Now, it normally gets pretty hot under the hood of any car. You know, if your water temperature stays normal, uh, lights are coming on for oil pressure or anything, they will get pretty hot under a hood anyway. That's pretty typical. And since you had the engine replacement done, see if they left anything out. So, you know, you got to take the hood off, right? Maybe they took the insulation off the hood. Now, it doesn't have the insulation, so it's going to get hotter because then the heat is going to, instead of getting away from the hood and going down, it'll make the hood hot so that keeps the heat inside and doesn't blow under the car. I mean, they might have left something off, but I mean, the only way you could really tell if you have one of those infrared thermometers that has a laser pointer, you get it for 20 bucks, before and after, before you could take the temperature of, say, the inner inside of the metal on each side of the engine, see what it is, and if it's hot or not, something weird is going on, but generally it gets pretty hot there anyway. So if you ever are curious about stuff like that, get one of those infrared temperature readings on a normal car, take temperatures of everything, and then you'll know, hey, it's changed. It hasn't changed. You can use, let's say, you don't think your AC is cold enough. You can take the temperature of the ducts, see what it is normally. And then if you think it's not working right, take it again. If you find out it's still the same temperature, it's you. Maybe you got coronavirus and you're overheating and it's not the car. You always want a solid database. And if you don't know what it should be, take it when the car's normal. Then you have something to compare it to. You could write in a little book in the glove box and then you'd know exactly what's happening on it. Oh no, it's always this hot and it's me. It's not the car. Because he of course is relative, you know? If you're hot, it's going to feel less hot. If you're cold, it's going to feel hotter. Winter's coming on now, it might feel hotter than it did before because you're cold and it seems hotter even though it's the same temperature. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.